Today I want to be talking about Ubuntu 24.04 Noble Numbat. Right here I have the daily build which I have running on my computer. Currently you can test the desktop image for multiple different architectures. The 24.04 release is a long-term supported edition and they have exciting updates we're going to dig into today and see what the next two years brings us. I'm testing out the Noble Desktop AMD64 version. And to start out, one of the biggest changes here is the installer for how you install Ubuntu. It is now a Flutter-based application. And as part of this transition, they've improved the user experience to reflect the new functionality of the installer and the values of Ubuntu Desktop. By using Flutter, we can benefit from the ability to rapidly iterate and polish the user experience, meaning we can continue to evolve the experience to become more easy over time. There's a great read here about the new installer and why they actually chose to use Flutter for this, but we're gonna go back to running through this installer. First, you have access to accessibility in Ubuntu once you've selected your languages. You can customize if you're hard of seeing, hearing, typing, pointing and clicking, zooming, etc. You then select your keyboard layout, much of what you've done before. You can use wireless or wired devices and try or install Ubuntu. Overall, we have a very nice modern theme here and there's not much in the way as they've added what seemingly seems like more steps, but for beginners, this is perfect because they've made it easier to follow along and not overwhelm you with all options. So we're gonna install, and we can go through the automated installation. These are for people who have an auto install YAML file. Basically, if you're creating repeatable systems or the interactive installation, which if we're new to Linux and Ubuntu, we would select what apps would you like to start, the default or extended, and then we can install third-party graphics and Wi-Fi firmware or additional codecs or media formats. This looks like what we've seen before. You can erase your disk and install Ubuntu or do a manual installation where you can manually set up your partitions. You put in your username and password and afterwards select a location and finally run through the install. Overall, I found the experience very beginner friendly. I do like the way that they've created this. It's much like what you experience in previous Ubuntu versions, but a cleaner and more user-friendly setup. So I'm excited for everyone to check out the new installer. It is one of the biggest changes notably made to Noble Numbat, the 24.04 LTS. So we're also gonna check out new features in 24.04, including a fix for a problem that existed in ARM HF. There's been over a thousand packages updated so it can handle a 64-bit value rather than 32-bit, allowing it to handle times up to 292 billion years in the future. Updated packages include the Linux kernel. With this release, we're getting updates to the kernel, which is going to bring many new features. And as of making this, as long as things go accordingly, they are getting the 6.8 version of the Linux kernel for the next Ubuntu 24.04 release. This is the latest stable version. That's why we saw the 6. X because they were uncertain, although there is a potential of getting 6.7 as well, but I believe they're going to land on 6.8 at the end of the day. And what's new in 6.8, at least the most notable changes, there's a new EEVDF scheduler, which stands for Earliest Eligible Virtual Deadline First, Intel Shadow Stack Support, Bcache File System, a new next-gen copy-on-write cow file system, Stable Intel Meteor Lake Graphics Support, support for enabling and disabling IA32 emulation at boot time. KVM now allows 4,096 virtual CPUs to be supported. Deadline servers, scheduling feature, aka the real-time throttling replacement. Rust bindings for work queues, Rust abstractions for network FI drivers. The kernel is getting rusty and so is Ubuntu. Performance enhancements with system calls on S390X. Nested KVM support for PPC 64L, support for TCP authentication option, and usual set of changes to support, of course, newer hardwares. So if you are one with new hardware, you're gonna wanna check out Ubuntu 24.04. It will be able to handle some of the latest drivers through the Linux kernel 6.8. We're gonna be talking about the desktop that's going to be featured in the new Ubuntu 24.04 release, as we're gonna talk about the support cycle for this new version. And here we have some of the long-term support additions. They haven't updated this quite yet, but 24.04, of course, is going to be replacing these two right here, which are not long-term support additions. You can tell by the block of only for about a year here. So of course, you don't want to use these in production environments. Instead, the long-term support additions 
are what's great for a stable environment as well as a stable production environment. What does that mean? Well, you can look through here. All their long-term support additions come with standard security maintenance for up to five years from release and then extended or expanded security maintenance for an extra five years. That means the entire expanded security maintenance for Ubuntu is 10 years for a long-term support edition. So what we can expect here if we drew it out, Ubuntu 24.04 will be here and it's going to extend all the way out until around 2034. That gives us the 10 full years of significant security maintenance and updates, which is what makes Ubuntu one of the best Linux distributions for users because of its stability and support. Once the installation is done, here's the screen that we get. We're going to talk about the desktop environment now. You'll be welcomed by an onboarding process like they've done before. They do ask you if you want to upgrade to Ubuntu Pro for up to five free machines. You can skip that for now, as that is the default. And they ask you whether or not you're gonna share system data to improve Ubuntu. I always select no, because I personally like to opt out of telemetry. One thing we're definitely gonna check out is the newly re redesigned Ubuntu's App Center and what that means for people using Ubuntu. But for now, here's a desktop, which boasts GNOME 46. Let's go check to make sure that's true. And what I wanna do is run NeoFetch here. That way we can look and see what kernel and desktop environment we're running. Currently, this is being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series. We're using 963 megabytes out of eight gigs. For GNOME 46, this is actually somewhere in the mid tier as far as memory usage goes for a desktop environment. It's nice to see them actually pulling back memory usage as they're optimizing GNOME. I do like to see that. It's using the 6.8 kernel right now, with the window manager theme being Iowata with Yaru on top of that for icons and theming made by Ubuntu. Fantastic stuff. So there's a lot to share with GNOME 46. We're not gonna get into everything, but one of the nicest features, at least I think, is you have this sort of like start button, which is called show apps, with a prominent display of an icon, making it easy for users to find. That way they can actually go through and open up any applications inside of their operating system, currently installed and switch between various different workspaces including a search bar up top to search for other applications. And there is a great breakdown from GNOME. I'm going to post it in the description below called Introducing GNOME 46 Kathmandu. And you can dive into what's new with GNOME 46 for yourself. Search is now everywhere. You can use a simple search icon. For example, they show in files. If you load it up, you'll have a search icon here, which allows you to search everywhere. Enhanced file applications, things like dynamic progress sections, at the bottom of the sidebar, you can see things like files getting copied and a more enhanced and better view of what's actually happening currently. There's been some code refactoring, which makes for changing views instantaneously, making it faster and a more frictionless experience as stated above. And finally, GNOME 46 comes with a lot of small improvements, searching for preferences, detailed date and time, location entry on click, starred favorite in grid view, and improved network discovery. You'll definitely want to check this out if you're interested in what exactly comes with GNOME 46. Again, the link will be in the description below. Let's go back to focusing on Ubuntu 24.04 and talking about another big change. Yes, that's right. The App Store has seen a revamp again, and I got to say it looks great. Minimal, beautiful, modern, easy to see, what people like the applications. They have a notable ranking system that tells you whether an app is good, very good, or bad, including something called insufficient votes. AKA, as people use the applications, they can vote on whether or not they like the application, and that will show prominently in these heading displays for the various different applications. There's also a featured snap section, gaming section, and various other categories that you can choose from. If you wanna to go to the featured, you can do that. And there's various different sort by features. Again, we get the name of the application, who created it, and if they are a star provider and or a verified provider. It tells you a little synopsis about the application itself and then how many votes and what rating the current votes have given the application. We can also choose from productivity, development, and games as the three most used categories. And you can also manage from the app store itself, including when updates are going to be checked. And you can check for updates right away, update all, search, 
between various different applications and when they were last updated and even show system snaps, which are core to the Ubuntu experience. On the about page, we can see that this is App Center version one and you can report stuff, including bugs on GitHub for them. Anyways, excited to see what you think. Easiest way to find an application will be up top. So make sure to use that. And then if you want, you can switch between Debian source packages or snap packages, whatever you like personally, but I'm liking the way that they've made the user experience even better for us in the app store. Of course, as we get into other things, system D was updated, net, net plan was updated, tool chain upgrades, including GCC, Python, Perl, LLVM, and Rust are all updated as far as tool chains go. OpenJDK.net, Golang, there's been security improvements and default configuration changes as well. I'll post a link in the description below because there are a lot of little changes that were made. But for those of you who are using ZFS, there are now guided installations enhancing the flexibility choices available for your storage management needs, which is fantastic with in the future an encrypted ZVS guide option coming. You also might notice updated Ubuntu fonts and the App Center is also designed in Flutter. Updated applications, as of right now, really no updated subsystems and Ubuntu server has received quite a few package updates as well. So you're definitely wanting to update your server instance if you are running on 22.04 or perhaps 20.04, might be a really good time to think about switching or at least upgrading as you're gonna get 10 more years of support included in with Ubuntu 24.04. As Ubuntu 24.04, long-term support is slated to be released on April 25th of this year. Do you plan on using it? Is there some feature that is notably worth switching for? I'd love to hear about it. Hopefully you're excited. If you are, think about subscribing below for future videos. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.